big data. We'll first look at the outline that we are going to cover in this lecture. We will indeed start with the definition of big data. We'll move on to discuss the forms of big data, the types, the characteristics, how to analyze big data, and then the benefits of having big data. So we'll start with the definition. So big data are extremely large facts or data collected by an entity for their business. So for example, the social media platform like Facebook will have large amount of data coming to it each and every time. If you take a subscriber, they can tell the number of hours that they have spent on their platform for let's say a week or a month. They can even tell the pages that they visited. They can tell the pages that they reacted to. They can also tell the number of times that that individual or that subscriber posted an image or a video or text on their wall. These are all data that is coming from one person to the social media platform. So imagine it's been the same across the number of subscribers that they have worldwide. That is going to be extremely a large amount of data coming to them. Now this data has to be analyzed and when done, a pattern or trend will be realized, which will be necessary for certain decisions that they are going to make. So if Facebook is able to identify that most women are available on the website or the platform at a particular point in time, they will be able to advise their customers who pay for adverts to post their product at that particular time to get enough traction. So let's look at the forms of big data. The first one is unstructured. They are raw data that are not held in any predetermined state. So if you go into town and you seek responses, what they give to you doesn't make any meaning. You have to now come and structure it and tell if you want that of women to use for your endeavor or for your purpose. Unstructured data can be analyzed or modified in so many ways to serve so many purposes. The second form is semi-structured. Here, it is not in a pure raw form. It has taken a certain shape, but not in its totality. So if you do a survey or you get information about women on a platform, that information has already taken a certain shape, but it might not be in a certain form or the criteria that you are looking to use for your analysis or for your work. So further work has to be done about it. Then the last one is structured data. So this is data that has taken a predetermined or a refined shape. It is a data that has a specific criteria attached to it. So if you have data about men of a certain age, that information has taken a certain shape. Structured data can only be used for limited purposes. Let's move to the types of data that we have. The first is numerical data. So this is data that are in quantitative forms, purely has a numerical nature. Data about the salaries of people for a particular month or a particular year, the expenditure of individuals or employees for a month. If you're looking for the number of times that people have made purchases, you should definitely expect it to be in numbers. The criteria or the characteristics of a numerical data is that numerical data can be manipulated to serve a purpose. So if the data provided is 100,000 salary for an employee, it can be changed to let's say 10,000. Another criteria is that you can easily find the mean for a numerical data. Examples of numerical data can be age, can be height, etc. The second type of data is the categorical one. Here, the data presented are of a non-numerical shape. They don't have numbers as their responses. You're likely to get words, you're likely to get symbols as your responses. Also, categorical data can be put into certain elements, certain criteria. So you can have males, females, you can have locations, marital status, and the likes. For categorical, you have qualitative characteristics and quantitative as well. So if you're talking about marital status, you can have the number of people who are married, number of people who are not unmarried. But the quantitative aspect must be dependent on the quality or the category that has been produced. For categorical data, we have two types. The nominal, which is data that are captured in labels or names. So if you're looking for the names of people in the classroom, 
locations of people, gender. Now, nominal data is qualitative as well as quantitative. So if you get the names, you can determine the number of people who are called Kwame or Estelle. Also, you get a location. You can tell the number of people who are within one continent or the other. The second one is the ordinal data. Here, it is a data that can be easily ranked or graded. The ranks or the data that are provided are in hierarchical order. If you get the data and you are categorizing them in sizes, an attire can be small, medium, large. The small comes before medium, the medium coming before large. So if you are talking about earnings, you can have a low income earner, medium income or a higher income. So questionnaires and also surveys also have a tendency to provide ordinary data. So people ask certain questions can be given the opportunity to choose whether they agree, strongly agree, they are indifferent, strongly disagree or just disagree. Let's look at the characteristics of big data. The first one is volume. So here we talk about the amount or the size gathered. This is important because the purpose of the data to be collected will determine the volume. So if you intend using the findings to serve a larger community or a larger population, then the information or the data that you are drawing must also be of a large volume. The second one is the variety. Variety talks about the form of the data. The purpose for which the data is being sought for will determine the appropriate variety it should be in. It can be audio, it can be visual or video, it can be written. So if it's a lecture and it's just a theory, then the audio will just serve for it. If it involves calculation, then video will be appropriate. The third is the velocity. This talks about the rate at which the data is collected, analyzed and presented. So the need for the data and information must match the velocity with which it is collected and churned out. The fourth is the veracity. Veracity talks about the accuracy, the truthfulness of the data. If the veracity is in question, the data will be irrelevant for whatever purpose it was sought for. And lastly, the value of the data. Here, we talk about the usefulness of the data. If the data given cannot serve its purpose, then the value is zero. Also, the amount spent in securing the data, if it doesn't match the value of its benefits, then the data is of a low value. Let's look at how big data is analyzed. The first is descriptive analysis. With this, the data is collected, analyzed, and then the information or the patterns drawn is used to describe a situation. So if you pick data and you narrow it to women of a particular age and you see a pattern or a trend, you can just use that to describe women of that particular criteria, of that particular characteristic that you found. The second one is the inferential analysis. So here, a sample of the big data will be drawn, analyzed, then the information or the pattern will be inferred to the larger population. This might be ideal, maybe due to the, the voluminous nature of the data gotten and maybe the lack of resources to process the entire data to draw out the pattern to describe. If I look at the benefits of big data, the first is that it provides useful insight. When you have big data, you are more likely to draw conclusions that will be more likely to be relevant. So if you are looking at a country that has 30 million citizens, if you get responses from let's say 20 million, you are more likely to get representatives in the country present in your sample size. So whatever conclusion you draw, it will be useful to serve that particular nation. Also, it provides a platform for evaluation. Once you gather the data, especially for businesses, and the patterns are drawn, it will be able to tell you where you stand in that particular year, whether you performed well in terms of revenue, in terms of cost, in terms of your trainings and all that. And that can provide a platform for you to make amends and to improve. The third is that it drives innovation. The data can provide or point out certain trends in the industry that you are or in your life and can give you the opportunity to make informed necessary changes. And lastly, it gives you a competitive advantage. Now, once you've gotten all this information, there's nothing that stops you in applying them and become 
formidable in the market that you operate or in your career.